Hello there, my fellow mech warriors, and welcome back to another dose of the Battle Mechs of Battletech. Today's episode is gonna be about one of those obscure designs, which, ironically, in this case, I wouldn't have even learned about had I not done a video on the Arctic Wolf mech. Hopefully I don't forget to actually upload that video before this one. Anyway, unfortunately, because this is a pretty obscure mech, pictures on it are kind of a rarity, for which I do apologize. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A few stats on this thing include... It is a light design at 30 tons, a top speed of 119 kph, and a rounded cost of 3.2 million seabills. Following their arrival on Ark Royal in the wake of the Refusal War, Khan, Phelan, Kells and newly exiled wolves quickly set about a production facility to support their army. Although many exiled wolf warriors pushed for a heavy flagship Omnimech that could command attention from the other clans as their new first battle mech, the Khan pragmatically realized that a second light machine was of more usefulness. This could also serve as a proof of concept for the new production facilities, allowing problems to be identified and fixed without the risk of producing a heavier, flawed Omnimech. Also showing his own bias for lighter, quicker designs, the Khan directed the scientists to create a mech offering, and I quote, impressive speed but with a bite, a real pack hunter. I guess they took him quite literally when they actually named the thing. Production of the Pack Hunter also showed the strength of the exiled wolves' ties to the Kel Hounds, the mech carrying standard armor and communication equipment manufactured by the Hounds and purchased as a part of a trade agreement for access to endosteel from an exiled wolf orbital factory. While the lion's share of the Pack Hunters were deployed in Clan Wolf in Exile's second line and garrison clusters as fast as they could be made, the Kel Hounds kept some for their own units. Intended for obsolescence from the very start, repeated delays and false starts would ensure that the Pack Hunter would see continued production until the introduction not of a new Omnimech, but an updated and upgraded Pack Hunter Mark II in 3077. Amazingly, the original would still reappear over 70 years later in the Dark Age, thanks to the Wolf Empire's capture of Technicron Manufacturing and Iran Battlemex Unlimited plant on Tongatapu. Rather than upgrade the Tongatapu Hermes 4K line to clan standards, the Empire used it instead to reintroduce the Pack Hunter. Though how the Empire acquired the plans is unknown, the decision was intended not as a snub to the exiled wolves, but an attempt at enticing its survivors to join the Empire following the fall of Ark Royal. The Pack Hunter saw limited action in 3059 against Clan Smoke Jaguar. Two garrison stars appended to the first Wolf Strike Grenadiers, with two Pack Hunters each, came under fire in a holding action on the world of Albiero. One Pack Hunter was lost to the destruction of its gyro, but the other three survived the battle and counted two heavy Omnimech kills between them. A few Pack Hunters had been sighted in Kel Hound regiments, either for testing and training purposes, or as a further indication of future cooperation between the Wolves in Exile and the Kel Hounds. Built around an endosteel skeleton, standard 210 rated fusion engine and 7 jump jets, a max speed of more than 100 kph and an impressive jumping range makes the Pack Hunter an excellent flanking and vanguard battle mech. Although lacking the high-powered sensor equipment that would make it a great scout, its ability to handle itself in almost any situation makes up for any perceived faults. The use of a standard engine and its internal double heat sinks make it a very cheap mech to manufacture. Its Ripper Series A1 ERPPC, capable of decapitating an enemy in a single blast, gives any mech facing it a good reason to worry. It excels when staying at extreme range and using its speed to keep the distance between it and bigger mechs, especially with multiple Pack Hunters acting in unison, as the name implies. However, the Pack Hunter is hard-pressed to defend itself if attacked by multiple opponents, due to its lack of secondary weapons and its meager 4 tons of standard armor. A few variants of the thing include... The Pack Hunter 2. This was introduced in 3065. It adds an XL engine to mount 8 General Systems ER Micro Lasers, and an additional double heatsink. 
It also carries the maximum amount of ferrofibrous armor possible for the design. Even with the added heatsink, it is still at risk to high heat levels. The Pack Hunter 3 was introduced during the Jihad in 3068. It removes half the lasers to mount a mask system, enabling it to reach speeds of up to 151 kph. This has the added bonus of alleviating some of the heating problems of the first variant. The Pack Hunter 4 was another Jihad variant introduced in 3070. This one takes advantage of new advances in clan technology. It has a lower rate XL engine, reducing the max speed to 90 kph. But to compensate, it has 9 improved jump jets. It was also given endo steel and a slight increase in ferrofibrous armor. For weapons, it has a clan ER large laser guided by a targeting computer. In addition, it also has a Guardian ECM suite. The Pack Hunter 5 is the Wolf Empire variant, and it is much more of a melding of Inner Sphere and Clan technology. Built around a few central Inner Sphere grade components, a 270 rated XL engine, 7 standard jump jets, and an endo steel frame, while clad in 5.5 tons of clan grade ferrofibrous armor. Now better armored than the original and capable of a remarkable 151 kph top speed, the Pack Hunter 5's sole weapon is a Clantech ERPPC, which gave the original model a great bite as well. Although this means that it is still plagued by the original's inability to engage multiple opponents, the sheer speed gained in the upgrade makes it even easier to avoid return fire. Which brings us to the successor of this thing, the Pack Hunter Mark II. This one also masses 30 tons, a top speed of 118 km an hour, but a higher cost of 5.1 million sea bills. A proof of concept of the Wolf in Exile clan manufacturing ability on Ark Royal, the original Pack Hunter was stated for obsolescence from the beginning, its line to be retooled to build Omnimax. Matters would change when Ark Royal was attacked by a force of the World of Blake in 3072. Efforts to produce the Omnimax successor of the Pack Hunter were stopped, and the design work was used to generate a comprehensive update of the battle mech instead. The first deployment of the Pack Hunter Mark II did not occur until 3077, though. It was delayed by exile assistance in the efforts to begin production of the Mongoose II on Ark Royal Mechworks and further delayed when an opportunity for collaboration with the Hell's Horses arose, which ultimately resulted in the Cygnus battle mech. Work on the Pack Hunter Mark II was complicated even more by repeated attempts by the Wolves to incorporate some of the cutting-edge technology, like endosteel composite structure, modular armor, and actuator enhancement systems. While all the technologies failed to meet the requirements of mass production, the extra light engine necessary to free up the mass for the installation was retained. Instead, the arsenal of the Mark II was expanded. The armor protection was also enhanced to about 80% of the total possible for a 30-ton frame, by using ferrofibrous. Another enhancement was the installation of a full head ejection system. Finally, the Pack Hunter Mark II is one of the very first wolf mechs to receive B-Pods. What are B-Pods, you may ask? Well, they're sort of like anti-personnel pods, except they're designed to blast through the armor of battlesuits. Since completing construction, the wolves have been supplying the Pack Hunter Mark II to their allies, which explains how some made their way to the Hell's Horses and even the Draconis Combine. Their existence among mercenary ranks is likewise unsurprising, as Stone's Coalition was another recipient of the capable design, as has been the Republic since they were created. Retained out of the original, the mech's main weapon is the Ripper Series A1 ERPPC, now backed up by a couple of arm-mounted ER medium lasers. The legs of the mech are protected from possible battle armor attack by having a B-pod mounted in each leg. The heat is managed by 10 double heat sinks, but sometimes even that is not adequate enough to handle the mech's heat load. Some variants of the Mark II include The Pack Hunter II 2 This was created in 3078 due to sabotage and the shortage of XL engines. It is a mixed tech variant of the Mark II that has to make do with a light fusion engine. 
Due to the weight of this inner sphere thing, engineers would drop both the ER medium lasers and exchange the B pods for A pods. However, the room made up by the dropped equipment allows it to have 5 tons of ferrofibrous armor. The Pack Hunter 2 3 This was an experimental variant developed in 3082. It utilizes improved jump jets and drops all the weapons except the ERPPC. To make room for that, it loses one ton of armor and utilizes an XL gyro. The Pack Hunter 2 4 this one was introduced into Dark Age in 3093. The B pods and the ER medium lasers are removed, leaving it once again with just the ER PPC. However, in place of the secondary weapons, each arm and leg was equipped with an enhanced actuator system. Finally for today, we have a custom Pack Hunter Mark II known as the ISIS. The personal mech of Galaxy Commander Isis Becker of Clan Ghostbears Omega Galaxy in 3136, this variant of the Pack Hunter Mark II removes the standard weapons of the original. In its place it has a medium pulse laser in each arm, twin ER micro lasers in the right and left torso, and for even extra punch, an SRM-6 mounted in the right torso. The version also carries slightly less armor than the standard Pack Hunter Mark II. Ironically, this one seems to be the only one with actual decent weapons out of the entire line, at least in my opinion. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Pack Hunter and the Pack Hunter Mark II, or however you want to call it, for today. Not the best armed mechs, or the best scout mechs for a light design, but hey, at least it's speedy. And before you say I'm hating on it, I would like to say that's my opinion on it purely as a solo combatant. It's literally in the name that this thing should be predominantly used in groups. So without a doubt its performance in that case will shine much more. But enough about my opinion. What about yours? Is the Pack Hunter among your favorite designs? What do you like or dislike most about it? As always, I welcome your thoughts and opinions on it in the comments below. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome day. This is GDN signing out.